Are you spending Christmas alone or with relatives you're only semi-excited about? My name is David Beeson, I'm a professional dating and relationship coach and today we're going to talk about the opportunities that come with the new Christmas and a new year. I want to start the video with a little story. Elephants, when they're born, when they're very young, they are being tied to a metal or a wooden rope. And when they're young, evidently they don't have enough power to free themselves from the rope. No matter how hard they would try, they wouldn't be able to break free. Now, as they grow and they become full-grown elephants, all it would take would be the choice to break free from it. But since they've been walking around the same metal rope or wooden rope their entire life, Having learned that they're not able to break free, they continue to not break free even though now they absolutely have the ability to. And the question that Buddy and I have for you is, what are areas in your life where you haven't made the decision to break free from limiting beliefs? Where specifically in your dating and your relationship life have you accepted limiting thoughts about yourself? Oh, I'm a waste of oxygen. Women would never like me if I can only get a woman who's physically attractive but has a disastrous personality or I can get women who have a, an amazing personality but aren't really that physically attractive to me. If you're a man and you want to be truly happy, you have to understand what science says. Science is absolutely and utterly clear that the number one predictor for human happiness is relationships, even more so than wealth, even more so than health. Obviously you want to take care of those areas as well and it's not a false dichotomy or trichotomy. Obviously you can do well in all those areas, right buddy? But the number one thing that's going to make you happy is relationships to other people. Yes, it is absolutely true, as Andrew Huberman says, that it's not just deep relationships that make us happy. Even superficial contact, seeing other people, having brief moments of eye contact with people. The janitor in your building, in your office building, for example, having a chat with him, a two-minute interaction with him having dogs in your life, animals, all those can, can greatly contribute to the love we feel in our life. But one of the most important areas is absolutely deep connections. And just ask yourself, what's been stopping you from finding an amazing girlfriend or a life partner? Do you think that you don't have enough time? Oh, I don't have enough time, I'm so busy. My career takes up so much of my time, my business. Yeah, it's all well and good, but if you sleep eight hours a night, you have 112 waking hours per week. And we all have that. It just depends on how you manage that. And yes, you should sleep eight hours a night, by the way, because you're still good, buddy. Are you getting distracted by the other dogs? And we absolutely should. No, 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 you're going to stay with me. <laughs> sleep eight hours a night because sacrificing sleep is just going to decrease your productivity. It's going to decrease your energy levels. So sleep is absolutely something you should look into. I believe it's Matthew Walker who wrote a book on why we sleep and it talks in detail about how you can optimize the quality as well as the quantity of your sleep which will help you with productivity as well as in dating and relationships. So really ask yourself what's stopping me? What excuses have I been making in the last several years that's been preventing me from finding the right girlfriend or life partner? Have you thought about, no, maybe I should just get a dog instead of a right girlfriend or life partner? No, you can absolutely have both. Dogs are absolutely amazing and they're fun, especially if they're very light and you can carry them the whole time. But why limit yourself to that? Why not just make a decision? Because remember the elephant, he could break free at any point in time. He's just not doing it because he's been socially conditioned. He's been conditioned to accept limitation. He's been conditioned to accept the idea that, oh, I'm not going to be able to break free just because in the past he's made that reference experience. Just understand what it's going to cost you to not make the decision to take this area of your life seriously. Fernanda and I were here in the Christmas market with my brother, his girlfriend. It's their dog, by the way. And I think you want to go. Okay, I'm just going to let you go, buddy. Ich gebe euch den mal. Nimm mal. Okay. <laughs> We're here in the south of Germany exploring Christmas markets and the, oh, there's my baby, yeah. <laughs> and isn't it, mwah. would you like to share something? No, it's no, okay. It's okay. <laughs> okay. So obviously you're going to be okay by yourself. This is not about needing a girlfriend or life partner, but why not create an amazing life for yourself? Why not just aim higher? Les Brown says, 
most people fail in life, not because they aim too high and miss, but because they aim too low and hit. They never even set the goal that they want to find an amazing girlfriend or life partner. They never commit themselves. They never make a study of it. If you've achieved success in any area of your life, you've made a study of it. You've committed yourself to success. You haven't made the commitment yet. Maybe you're afraid of getting rejected. Maybe you have blind spots, mindset problems, limiting beliefs that are stopping you from putting yourself out there, from meeting women in real life, from meeting women online. Maybe you've had a very terrible breakup in the past. Maybe you've been divorced. And a part of you really doesn't want to go through that. And that's fine and I truly understand that. But what's the alternative? What's the alternative to putting yourself out there? Being alone for the rest of your life? Yes, there's going to be temporary pain. Yes, you absolutely have to learn to deal with rejection. But the alternative to that is a life in loneliness. You're going to miss out on high-quality relationships to other men. You're going to miss out on high-quality relationships to women. Rejection is going to sting a little. Yes, some women are going to make fun of you. Maybe you're going to have to face some inner demons, some limiting beliefs. That's all well and good. And yes, there will be a little bit of discomfort associated with the process. But remember, we as human beings operate in three zones. There's the comfort zone. We all know that when we do our job, when we do most things that we feel quite comfortable with, that we feel very competent with, we're in a comfort zone. If we push ourselves and we do something that's a little bit more difficult, then we get into the zone of growth or challenge. There, we might feel a degree of anxiety and nervousness, but we're still able to perform effectively. And then if we push ourselves even more, if we overwhelm ourselves, that's exactly what's ha what happens. That's exactly what that zone is called. It's the zone of overwhelm. That's when we're not able to function anymore. When we're too nervous. For example, if I might ask you to walk up to two women right now and tell one of them, hey, excuse me, you're really pretty and I just want to come and say hi. You have extraordinarily great style. I noticed this, that, or the other thing about you. Hey, my name is David. I just want to come meet you. Maybe that feels like too much right now. Completely understand that. And maybe that's why you just want to do online dating. And online dating is absolutely amazing. But take a step back and understand, okay, maybe that's too much. But maybe there's a couple of steps I can take in between. Maybe I can be strategic about it. And maybe I can just put one foot in front of the other. Goals can sometimes seem so overwhelming. But what we simply need to do is we need to chunk them down. You have this goal. Okay, I want to find an amazing girlfriend or life partner. Well, that seems a little bit overwhelming. You don't exactly need to know, you don't know how to do that. So break it down into seven or eight manageable bite-sized steps. First thing, get style advice or change your style. Like your appearance, your looks. Because we can drastically influence our looks. Then change your mindset problems. Improve your confidence. Get on online dating apps. Figure out how to use them. Learn how to approach women in real life. Learn how to perform on the date and then understand the dynamics that unfold when a man and a woman are negotiating about a potential relationship. And all of a sudden you have seven, have seven or eight steps and it seems quite manageable. You just overwhelm yourself by setting this huge goal and not breaking it down. You've done that successfully in other areas of your life already. You've set a big goal and you've chunked it down and then it becomes manageable. Any area, oh, I want to lose weight, oh, difficult. Okay, well, what can I do? I can start tracking calories. I can do five to 10,000 steps a day, 10,000 steps ideally. Okay, uh, doesn't mean that I can't eat ice cream anymore. I just have to fit it into the calorie budget. Oh, okay, I have to work out three times a week. Okay, theoretically to lose weight, you don't even have to work out. But basically you chunk it down, then you're like, oh, I don't even know what exercises to do. Okay, who could I ask? Who could I ask for advice? Yes, I could do a Google search. Yes, I can use free resources. I can get paid resources. I can get mentors. I can get help. But commit yourself to the process because walking through a Christmas market like this, not drinking Glühwein, which is malt wine, which tastes amazing, by the way, but it is alcohol. Or if you're going to have one, only have one just a little bit because alcohol is so detrimental but instead getting these positive emotions, instead of getting these positive emotions from a neurotoxin, from a type one carcinogen called alcohol, it's cancer causing, you get it from an amazing girlfriend or life partner who's happy to be in your presence. Because so many of us, we look at Christmas and yes, obviously, I was joking earlier with relatives that you don't feel too excited about because there's some that we're not that excited about, but obviously Christmas is a time to celebrate with family members. It's so sacred. But wouldn't it be nice to have an amazing woman by your side and 
family, it's absolutely possible. Make a commitment. Now, obviously, if you're watching this video in the middle of the year right now, it doesn't happen to be Christmas, you don't have to wait to the 1st of January to be able to change your life. You are absolutely competent and able to make a decision right now. You're the little baby elephant who's walking around the little pole and he thinks he can't rip it out. All it would take is a decision and you have the ability to free yourself from these limiting thoughts and beliefs and mindset problems. You just have to understand how beautiful life is going to be, what it's going to cost you if you don't do it, chunk it down into the concrete next steps and then, remember the formula of change, decrease the perceived cost of change. Because again, remember, most people don't fail in life because they aim too high and miss. They aim too low and hit, they settle. And then they realize, well, this doesn't really fulfill me. It's okay, I'm getting my needs met barely, but I don't really feel alive. And in order to feel alive, you just have to make progress. Even if it just means getting more dates with the right kind of women. Okay, they stay interested in me. I'm getting more matches online. Making progress towards a desired goal is already going to make you feel alive because guess what? It's not even going to stop when you're in the relationship. Then you're going to make progress in terms of growing with that person. Fernanda and I, we're still growing together. We're creating depth. So in the beginning, there's a lot of variety and newness, and then you create depth with that person, and then you create experiences. But growth is a never-ending subject. And you know that whenever you've made progress in your career or your business, maybe you've hired a new employee, you've made progress in some way, shape, or form. You felt really alive. And if there's one thing that I wish for you this year, it's the sensation of aliveness because what you'll get is never going to make you happy in the long term. It's going to give you a short-term emotional boost, but it's the growth that you'll experience as a person. Obviously, getting an amazing girlfriend or partner is fantastic because you have more people in your life. There's a Harvard study that talks about the probability that people age a lot better. For example, basically what they're saying is something along the lines of, when people are happy in their relationship when they're 50, they age a lot better and they're much less likely to die of numerous diseases when they're 80. So it's not just cholesterol. It's not just how you take care of your body. Obviously, you should do that. Obviously, you should optimize your nutrition 100%. But the number one predictor for your health even, other than exercise, sleep, and all of that, is relationships. So just understand what is it that I truly want, make a decision, get that growth, get that aliveness, and get a relationship you truly deserve. If you want to apply for a free initial consultation call or use free resources that are out there, but why don't you take this opportunity seriously? And again, if you're watching this in the middle of the year, you can make decisions right now. No need to wait half a year, no need to waste another six months by yourself, right? But going back to that, so obviously, relationships are going to make you happy and healthy. But at the same time, it's not what you get. It's how you learn to contribute in the relationship. So the growth continues even in the relationship. And then you'll have to understand the dynamics, how a lot of men mess it up. A lot of men, they overinvest a little bit. Maybe they're not kind enough. They violate certain crucial dynamics in the early stages of the dating process, as well as when they're one or two years into the relationship. And then they say, oh, women keep losing interest in me. That doesn't happen by accident. That doesn't just happen by itself. You exhibit certain behaviors in your verbal as well as nonverbal communication that either attracts her to you or that pushes her away. So on the one hand, happiness is going to make you having a relationship. It's going to make you super happy. On the other hand, it's really about growth and aliveness first and foremost. Achieving a goal is about the sensation of feeling alive. Because let me tell you something, even if you get a relationship and you don't grow with that person, at some point you're going to feel just as dead inside. Now, obviously, you want to have that person because it's much better to spend Christmas with an amazing person, but keep growing in that area. And if it's other areas in your life, also dedicate yourself to that. But understand, if you don't make a decision to break free from those limiting beliefs, you're always going to keep stuck. You're always going to stay stuck. because. The fact that you don't have a desired result in your life is not just because God or the universe hasn't given it to you yet. You haven't earned it. This strategic actions which you have not taken yet because of blind spots, because of limiting beliefs that you haven't committed yourself to resolving yet, that are stopping you from taking action and getting those results. So really do a deep dive. What's stopping me? What do I believe about myself? About the world? About, what, about what's okay to say on a date? About what's okay not to say? What do I believe about women? What do I believe that may or may not be true? And then ask yourself, is this really so? Oh, women would never want me. High quality women would never want me. Is that really so? How do I know that's true? Well, I've never had experiences with women. Okay, cool. 
So just because you've never had an amazing woman in your life, does that equal the pa does the past equal the future? Does that automatically mean that you can never have that? Well, if you believe that the past equals the future, it absolutely will. But if it doesn't, it doesn't. Everything seems impossible until it's been done. The Wright brothers created the first little airplane of some sort. Everybody thought they were crazy until it actually grew into something. Everybody thought Elon was crazy. And now, over the last however many years, even after PayPal, he's gained a tremendous amount of credibility. Even though people might be criticizing what's going on with Twitter, but that's a different discussion. In the beginning, people are going to think it's a little bit crazy. In the beginning, everybody is going to think it's, oh, it's not possible. I don't think it's going to work. Why? Because I don't know how. It's called the tyranny, or Tony Robbins calls it, the tyranny of how. Don't fall victim to the tyranny of how. Just because right now you don't know how to, doesn't mean that you can't. How many times have you not taken constructive action in your life towards a desirable goal, towards a desirable life circumstance, like having an amazing girlfriend or life partner, because you didn't know how? You can figure out the how, but first you have to make a decision and then commit yourself and, show, and, tr and change your beliefs. Because as Tony says, your beliefs are going to shape you long term. If you don't believe it's possible, you're not going to be able to do it. If you don't believe you can, if you don't believe the universe meant for it to happen to you, if God doesn't want you to have it, if you're destined to be alone forever, if women just couldn't like you, if you're ginger, you can't see it right now, but it's down there and that's why you're a waste of oxygen. Well, that's exactly what's going to unfold. Beliefs are like self-fulfilling prophecies. Monitor them very, very carefully. What's the story you've told yourself about yourself that's been limiting you? And then, as Tony says, divorce that story and marry the truth. A lot of people in personal development, they like to use affirmations. Oh, I am, I this or that. But affirmations only work if you affirm what's really true. Affirming something that is objective nonsense is going to create a degree of friction within yourself because you're evidently cognitively able to distinguish between what's obviously nonsense and what's right. So affirming something that isn't true, as in you crash your car and you sit in a car crash and you say, everything's fine, the car is, he the car is healthy, I was going to say. There's a German coming through right there. The car is fine, it's in perfect state. Affirming something that objectively isn't true, that doesn't make any sense. But affirming something that's evidently true about yourself will help you move in the desired reaction, in the desired direction. So ask yourself, what, are, what is the story that I've been telling myself about myself for so many years? 30, 40, 50 years. And maybe you're ready to divorce that story and commit yourself to the truth. So that next year, when you're sitting there in Christmas, maybe even a lot sooner, you can share those special moments, not just with your mother, your father, your siblings, your close relatives, but also with an amazing woman who absolutely and utterly adores you. I wish you all the best. Huh? She says, oh, a dog would suit us. <laughs>